Landover's breaking down. And I'm stuck. Yeah, you're good, uh, old chap. Just keep it moving. Hey, Alex, how's the uh, Defender doing? I just got a warning that says coolant level low. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll take a look when we get back to base. Sounds good. It's brand new. It's got 500 miles. Why would it need coolant? Uh, God, I, I know. First we get a suspension fault, now we get a... Uh, coolant fault. I bet there's a leak. You think there's a leak? I bet there's a leak. It's uh, above the minimum. It's above the minimum. Ugh, come on, Defender. I'm rooting for you. Stop it already. Don't. Don't do this. Ladies and gentlemen, behind me are three iconic Overlandy family haulers that's right to my right is the brand new land rover defender behind me is of course the very iconic land cruiser and finally the brand new i mean fresh from the factory nissan armada and we are here in the middle of a colorado snowstorm because we're going to take them off road and we're going to see just how good they are at hauling your family and that's why tommy's brought a guest reviewer that's right i brought our puppy blaze blaze is our bernie's mountain dog puppy and he's going to help us review these off-roaders in the dirt. Now, this is where things get interesting, right? Well, it's snowing. Well, it is snowing, but all these vehicles behind us are quite expensive, so we're gonna have to be pretty careful today. With more than 985 million acres of public land and over 400,000 miles of roads and trails, including open dates and width restrictions, Onyx Off-Road is a must-have app for any motorized enthusiast. Explore with confidence using the most trusted and accurate GPS satellite topo trail mapping app. Turn your phone into the best off-road mapping tool for finding open dirt roads and trails, tracking your favorite routes, and adding custom waypoints along the way. Onyx Off-Road uses your phone's GPS when you're off-grid and offline. Access full detailed satellite imagery, open trails, and remote campsites all while out of cell service. Download the app from the App Store, Google Play, or go to onyxmaps.com slash offroad-app for a seven-day free trial. Once upon a time, the Land Rover Defender was a square-jawed, no-nonsense, off-road, or dare I say, agricultural and it competed directly with the Jeep Wrangler, but not anymore. Today, this is a $71,000 three-row family hauler. It still has a lot of off-road goodies, but it is much more refined than Defender of past. So that's why we are not comparing it to the Wrangler or the Forerunner, but instead to vehicles that serve a very similar purpose. The Land Cruiser is an off-road legend, and this generation of the Land Cruiser, known as the 200 series, has been around for over 12 years. But this one you see here is a special one. This is the Heritage Edition, and it's gonna take a lot to beat a Land Cruiser because off-road, not much compares. Now next to it we have a very special vehicle. This is the new 2021 Nissan Armada, and it has just been facelifted. Now, this is where things get interesting because even though in the US we don't typically think of the Armada as a true off-roader abroad, this is sold as the Nissan Patrol. And the Patrol is a name that dates back many, many decades and has a legendary off-road heritage. Price-wise, this Land Cruiser comes in at $90,000. And this Armada, well, it's so new, the price is TBD to be determined. Time to go to the Armada, Blazy. Good boy, Blazy. Wow, that is a high lift over height. You're not gonna get in there by yourself, buddy. No way. Look how high that is. You're stuck. All right, ready, one, two, go. This Nissan Armada kind of blends the Land Rover and the Land Cruiser when it comes to the way it was built. So it's still body on frame, but it does have 
four wheel independent suspension, but it isn't that crazy height adjustable thing like in the Land Rover. So what we get instead is a uh, control here for the four wheel drive system. So I've got auto four high and then a proper four wheel drive low. I have a snow setting here and a tow mode. But that's about as far as it goes when it comes to uh, dialing in the four-wheel drive system for off-road terrain. All right, Tommy, the brand new Armada fresh off the factory floor. But well, we should say refreshed Armada. So this vehicle has received a pretty heavy refresh for this year. Uh, and what's new? Well, the front end is completely new. Yeah, we got some new treatments in the rear and this interior is much improved over the outgoing model year. So it's got a new central screen here. This whole center stack has been revised. Just looks much more high end, much more um, like a, a luxury vehicle. Yeah, and I love the fact that I can just hit snow and I'm in snow mode. I think you just took yourself out of it. All right, now I'm in snow mode. <laughs> All right, let's go see how this thing does off road. So this Armada. Yep is a very large vehicle. This is more of a competitor to something like a Tahoe or a Suburban than something like a Defender or a Land Cruiser. But we brought it out here today because if you go to places like the Middle East, this vehicle is called the Nissan Patrol. And some of the stuff uh, that they do with the Patrol out there is insane. So we thought, hey, you know, they bring it to the US in the form of this luxury Armada. Let's see how it does. This is more, you know, a truck-based traditional SUV, right? The um, Defender is almost a crossover in some ways, right? But this is definitely a truck underneath. It's body on frame, but it does have independent rear suspension. And it also has a fairly minimal amount of ground clearance straight out of the box. So did you see the running boards on this thing? Yeah, and we're already running into... Oh boy, the Land Rover's breaking down. And I'm stuck. Yeah, you're good, uh, old chap. Just keep them moving. That's our cameraman and the Defender in front of us. Um, but this Armada does feel very comfortable. It does have a great ride out in the uh, the rough stuff here. Yeah, yeah, it really does smooth out these bumps, Tommy. But once again, you know, the biggest issue by far, especially on snow, are the tires, right? And you can fix that. Yeah, you can fix that. Although this does have 20 inch wheels. This is something called the Midnight Edition, which is like the blacked out version. Uh, and 20 inch wheels are never gonna be all that eager to accept all terrains. Oh, there goes the uh, traction control. It's figuring it out though. It's working hard though, Tommy. Uh, and the other thing, you know, we're talking about going off road. This is such a big old beast that, you know, we're in a wide open trail, but God help you if you got into <laughs> some technical stuff. <laughs> yeah, you'd be out of luck pretty quick. Uh, this is more of a, a soft road. This is more, you know, you got a cabin, you got a dirt road, uh, maybe it's got some rocks in it, maybe a little stream or two. Four low seems to be working well though. Yeah. This 5.6 is a great engine. Uh, they got a slight power update with this uh, facelift as well. So tons and tons of power, tons and tons of low end torque. And I love that they still have the low range transfer case. Now under the hood of the Defender is a straight six that's turbocharged and electrified. It's a mild hybrid. It puts out just under 400 horsepower and just over 400 pound-foot of torque. Now we did start with the four-cylinder turbo, uh, but unfortunately that one, well, that's a story for another video. But this vehicle has plenty of power, not only to go off-road, but to tow over 8,000 pounds. The Land Cruiser has a legendary engine, the 3UR 5.7 liter V8. Same engine you'd find in the Toyota Tundra. But here it makes 381 horsepower, about 400 pound-feet of torque. This engine is neither turbocharged nor is it electrified. This engine has everything you want when it comes to traveling huge distances off-road with no other human contact reliability. The Armada, believe it or not, is the most powerful of the three when you run it on premium fuel. The horsepower rating is 400 horsepower and 413 pound-feet of torque out of a 5.6 liter V8. Also old school like the Toyota, maybe not quite as not quite as we'll say uh, vintage, but uh, in terms of towing capacity, all three of these will tow about 8,000 pounds. All right, so we do have a suspension fault here. This is the uh, chase vehicle so far. Here's a technical way to uh, clear a suspension fault. <laughs> Turn it off and on again. <laughs> Let's see if that fixes it. Ah, looks like it worked for now. All right, onward, Land Cruiser time. Got 
gonna fold the tailgate down. Blazy, come here. I'll lift Jin. Oh. The Toyota Land Cruiser is still very old school in the way it is assembled. Underneath there is a traditional frame that weighs a thousand pounds and then they latch a body on top of that. Out back there's a rigid axle. It does have independent front suspension but there's no height adjustable air suspension. However, Toyota has incorporated some modern tech into this vehicle. Now first of all, it does of course have a low range transfer case and full time four wheel drive. But beyond that, take a look at this. We have something called multi-terrain select, and this allows me to dial in what kind of terrain I'm driving over. So loose rock, mud and sand, mogul, and it even has something called crawl control, which is very similar to the off-road cruise control in the uh, Land uh, Rover, <laughs> Land Rover Land Cruiser. And basically, by turning that on, it will maintain a constant steady speed as I go off-road. And this little button is something called turn assist, so it allows me to make tighter turns by locking up the inside wheel as I maneuver around rocks or obstacles. And lastly, of course, we have this button here, a good old school center differential lock, but no rear diff lock in either of these as equipped. So we're in the Land Cruiser, Tommy. This has a lot more stuff going on here. It does. So I'm going to go into neutral here. Yep. Let's go into four wheel drive low. Yep. Um, let me choose a setting here in the multi terrain select loose rock, mud, sand, mogul, rock and dirt, or rock. And while you do that, I'm going to turn up my uh, heated seats. Okay, that sounds good. And I'm also going to lock the center differential because this is a full time four wheel drive setting uh, or system. So with disengage, now I've got an equal torque split front and back. So into drive here, I'll tell you right off the bat, Dad, that this Land Cruiser feels much more at home in the dirt and snow than the Armada. Just has got more clearance. It's got that solid rear axle, so it flexes and articulates a little better. Um, I, I do like the tech included in this with the uh, lockable center diff. I think that's cool. And the multi-terrain selects, I'm not really sure what it gives you, but it seems to be crawling up the snowy trail pretty well. Yeah, you know, I compare like the Armada to the uh, Sumo Athlete. Okay. Uh, and this is more of the, um, let's call it Japanese baseball player, right? The, the kind of... Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's true, right? It, it's, it's, it's a much more, you know, person or vehicle that's not as specialized for, you know, taking families across long distances on the highway. This one feels like it could do it all. Yeah, I mean, I think it would still be amazing at taking families across uh, uh, long distances on but it, highways. But it feels like a much more natural athlete out here. It doesn't feel, like I said, like a, like a sumo in the snow. No, it does really, really well. Now, unfortunately, the big drawback to this Land Cruiser and to the Armada are the tires. And I had this big, grandiose plan of us taking the three of these way up into the mountains, doing some serious rock crawling, and then the snow came. And the snow just means that it would be too dangerous to do that because this is a $90,000 rig with 300 miles on the odometer. I'm not going to be the one to stuff this into let's, a tree. Let's see how Blazy's doing back there. Oh, Blazy look out. Cam. He's so happy. You like it back there, Blazy? Uh, he doesn't look that happy, dude. He looks, he looks happy. He looks terrified in the back corner. Oh, no. He's a good boy. <laughs> I'm not sure. The ride is really good in the Land Cruiser, despite Blaze maybe thinking otherwise. Uh, and steering is precise. Power is incredible out of the 5.7. It's good. Really good. Well, look. Here's the biggest difference between this and the other two. This, I think, is the world's most reliable car. Full stop, period. There's nothing. <laughs> it's built in a special factory that's been you know, cranking out Land Cruisers for the last, whatever, 30 years. It is by far, um, you know, overbuilt and over-engineered as cars go in the entire automotive industry. Or so, trucks in this case. Or trucks, yeah. So yeah. What, what you're getting here is a vehicle that will outlast me for sure and probably outlast you. You do have to admit it feels well screwed together. It feels incredibly well screwed together. It is a little rough on the road here, you know. Uh, it's but, not rough. It is beautifully smooth. You agree, Blaze? Uh, he's not. Oh, no, look, he's, 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 he's got that look like I'm... Uh, no, I don't agree. Going off-road in the snow is really about ground clearance, approach departure angle, and most importantly about tires. And the vehicle here with the best tires is by far the Defender. But these are optional. These are the optional off-road tires. So we're rolling on Goodyear Wranglers on 20-inch wheels. While they're not super off-roady for Colorado, they are the most off-road worthy tires here. And that's why we're going to take this one 
out on the trail last because, well, if the other two get stuck, this defender will have the best chance of getting him unstuck. All right, I'm just gonna say it. Hell will freeze over before a Land Cruiser needs to be recovered by a Defender, but the Land Cruiser unfortunately doesn't have the same kind of off-road meat from the factory that the Defender does. This one is rolling on 18-inch wheels, which is better than the 20s on that Defender, but the tires, not really all that great. These are the Dunlop AT23s, basically a slightly aggressive all-season, and the Armada is kind of in that same camp. This is a much bigger wheel than the uh, Land Cruiser. These are 20-inch wheels, and it's a Bridgestone Dueler HT, so also kind of a mild all-season. I wish that Toyota and Nissan would equip kind of proper BFGs or dirt tracks from the factory, kind of like you can get on the Defender. Hey Alex, how's the uh, Defender doing? I just got a warning that says coolant level low. Wow, okay. All right, we'll take a look at that as well. Coolant level, there's not much we can do about. Maybe it does need uh, some coolant. And we'll take a look when we get back to base. Sounds good. It's brand new, it's got 500 miles. So we've got a suspension warning and a coolant warning in the... But that's uh, understandable. We've been off-road for almost four miles now. This is uh, not again, Tommy. Just not again. This is getting... A oh, little... wait, hang on. What? I got a warning on the Land Cruiser. What's that? Oh, I didn't. No, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> You're just being funny, aren't you? I am. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Land Rover, but oh. I, I gotta... Oh. I gotta rest of your jimmies for that one. I mean, if, you know, it would be dripping coolant, right? If it was... You could see it. That's the good thing about it. Is it dripping coolant? I don't know. I don't think so. It's uh, above the minimum. It's above the minimum, but we're kind of facing at an angle. Um, we need to put it on a piece of flat ground. Well, we'll do it when we get down there. Yeah, I, I think it's actually okay. Ugh, come on, Defender. I'm rooting for you. Stop it already. Don't, don't do this. Maybe they just didn't fill it up from the factory. I mean, we didn't, we didn't check it when it was brand new because we kind of figured that buying a $71,000 vehicle would be full. I think they checked this one pretty well, Tom. <laughs> I think they checked it. Maybe it's right. got a little leak. All right, let's, uh, I don't see a leak. I mean, you'd see it. Let's, let's put it on global ground and we'll see. Well, Blazy seems to have uh, found his way someplace more comfortable in the corner. How you doing, Blazy? You know, Tommy, I, I got a feeling like we're snake pit with the Defender. Yeah. At this point, you know, I, I don't know what to say, you know? I mean, the reason I'm not, like, tearing into it because I figure people will, will do that in the comments. Are you okay? Oh, buddy, you gotta stay still. Yeah, be, are you okay, Blazy? Oh, be careful, buddy. All right, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just, um, <laughs> what are you doing? just hoping to get down to Polter with all three vehicles in one piece at this point. <laughs> so that's what, max coolant level right there? Where's it at? We're at max. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's a sensor. Let's see if we can clear it. Maybe, uh, maybe by turning it on and off, we'll clear it. Let's try. Gone? Gone. Gone. So maybe what happened was because of the incline of the vehicle, it sensed that there was not enough coolant because when we were kind of parked at an angle, um, it was kind of low, but now that we're flat, it's gone. So I love a car that fixes itself. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> but still. My question is though, Dad, we were at the same angle in the Land Cruiser. How come we didn't get a warning? Why don't you guys in the comments <laughs> below answer that question? I've got a couple ideas, but I'm sure you've got better ones. Please. All right, Blazy, let's go into the Defender. Now, this Defender Blazy has something pretty cool. I can actually use these buttons back here and lower the suspension for you. But of course, I'm not going to put them into the way back there because it's got a recovery gear in it, which we'll want to bring just in case. I'm going to put them back here in the back of these seats, which are, get this, nice and plastic line. Plenty of room for them back here. With this new Defender, Land Rover has abandoned the old school body on frame construction and solid axles in favor of air suspension, independent suspension, and an insane amount of off-road gizmo. So starting off the new Defender, it glides into life. And now we can dive into some of these buttons. First of all, 
four corner air suspension so I can push this button and the whole vehicle will rise. Luckily, they haven't abandoned the low range transfer case so I can still engage a low range by going into neutral here on the transmission selector and pushing low. And then comes the terrain response. This does have the off-road capability package, so we have a configurable terrain response setting, and we also have six other programs, ranging from snow to mud and ruts to a, a rock crawl setting. Um, and then you can also program how, how the diff behaves and how the traction control behaves, and it's, uh, it's almost overwhelming, but it is uh, very impressive. Like, look at this! 4x4 four four info screens that show you when the center differential is locked. Oh, it seems to be a little bit stuck. There we go. And then you get to the Wade Sensing page that'll tell you how uh, deep the water you're driving through is. It even has this um, kind of off-road cruise control, all-terrain progress control, so that you can uh, maintain a constant steady speed out in the dirt. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty incredible, but it definitely requires a little bit of concentration to dial in correctly. And Look then, at these cool cameras, Dad. I know, that, that's really cool. Look at that, so you can do like a full 360 pano. That's so cool. You know, this by far has the most tech of the other two vehicles. Uh, but there's a reason that Toyota doesn't put the newest tech in their vehicles, and that's because, well, old tech is proven tech. Proven tech? You betcha! And um, this vehicle has a lot of tech. Let's see, what kind of drive mode should we go into? Grass, gravel, snow? Yeah, I do grass, gravel, snow. The coolest thing is, this is what I see. I see a big dog in my rearview mirror, right? But watch what I can do. Look at this. How cool is that? Whoa! Look at that. Very fancy. Oh yeah, he's happy. All right. Got his platform back there. Put it in drive, and here we go. Now this should have the best ride because of the air suspension, right? And it's a it's a double bag system, so there's a separate bag for the damping, um, and that's separate from the actual uh, height adjustment. So in theory, you can go into the off-road setting and still have um, uh, a good ride height. And to be fair, Land Rover was the first com company that actually uh, did come out with uh, terrain management. Yeah, they pioneered terrain response, exactly. They also pioneered hill descent control. I gotta say, the ride is feeling pretty firm here. It is pretty firm. Now, this has the 20 inch wheels with the yeah. optional off-road tires. Yeah. And the tires aren't like a dirt track or a BFG like I'd love them to be. They're kind of like a rugged terrain, I would call them. And being a 20 inch wheel, you can't really air down that much because there's not a lot of sidewall. Now on the six cylinder, you can get a 19 inch wheel, which would be better, yeah. but ideally you'd have the 18 inch steel wheel, but you can't get that on the six cylinder because it won't clear the brake caliper. You have to go with the four cylinder. I think this has the best ride. I'm gonna go with this as the best ride. I think the Armada certainly, you know, really threw me around off-road. It's different because I was driving that, right? So it's much different being in the driver seat than being in the passenger seat because here you can hold onto the steering wheel. Yes. What do you think? Which one would you say had the best ride? I'm gonna go Land Cruiser. Yeah. And then this and the Armada are pretty tied. Okay, I'm gonna go this, then Land Cruiser, and then Armada. I don't know if I love the four corner air suspension for regular use off road because it can be unreliable after uh, thousands of miles of use. I mean, they just do wear out. It is a wear item. Yeah, and to be fair, Tommy, any air suspension will fail. Not just Land Rovers, but Mercedes, Audi, they all fail given enough time. How's the dog doing? He's he's okay. Yeah. yeah he seems back there. Oh we got we got the coolant level low light again. Jeez. Yeah, coolant level low. Oh yeah. So I think it must I think the sensor must be somehow uh, triggering. You figure that they I know you It's figure, not that steep here, Dad. I mean it's not like we're doing Hell's Revenge up some of those um, or, or, or uh, what, what's that other trail we have? We do fins and things up some of those dinosaur fins. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty mild here. Made it 580 miles though. That's pretty good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, well, to be continued, huh? To be continued. The temperature gauge is reading right. So even though it says coolant level low, first of all, if it was low, then the temperature would start to go up and our temperature is fine. You can tell it's right in the middle. And that's after the second uh, reset of the vehicle, or I should say powering on, on and off. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not too worried about it. Remember I said all three of these vehicles are family haulers, and that's because they can be had with a third row, but they take very different approaches to actually accomplishing that. So first and foremost, you'll note the Defender has the spare tire on the outside, which is, well, where you want it in case you have to actually replace a tire or a wheel. It's hard to get underneath the other two vehicles in the snow. The problem, of course, with this solution is that it blocks your view out the back, but the Defender has a solution for that as well. It also has 
a swing gate, which can be problematic because if you're parked, you know, in a parallel situation, this is not going to open up very easily. Uh, there are the optional third row seats in this vehicle. Unfortunately, we've got all of our recovery gear blocking them. So uh, let's move on to the Land Cruiser. Now, normally a Land Cruiser would have these cool jump seats, right, Tommy? That's right, but the Heritage Edition does away with the jump seats. Because in, it's cool. Well, no, in pursuit of additional storage. And it also has something even better than that, ready? Yeah. It has a tailgate, look at that. So the Land Cruiser uh, has a ton of storage area back here, but um, unfortunately the Heritage, you can't seat seven in. Yeah, and I love the Heritage Edition. I mean, not only do you get uh, deleted jump seats, but you get this cool logo back here. Check that out, that's so old school, right? And look at those wheels. Yeah. They're bronze. And you get the roof rack. And you get the roof rack, which does look like something from 1972, unfortunately. <laughs> the 70s are back, and FJ40 is like the most valuable off-roader out there. Now the Armada does not have a uh, swing gate or tailgate, it's just got a big opening hatch, and it's got a very spacious third row seat here that folds up from the floor. So uh, three different approaches to uh, rear seat comfort and rear seat storage. What about um, kind of the, the luxuriousness of this? Do you think it compares with the other two? I think this is probably the best. I do like the way that it's they... It's the most modern, right? Yeah, it is the most modern. Uh, I really like the quality of the materials. I mean, they are not necessarily your standard leathers. Uh, they feel like neoprene in a lot of cases. Um, and the plastics feel really good. They're, they're rubberized in, in a lot of areas as well. Uh, so in terms of luxury, I think that this is the most luxurious. I like the design the most, both on the inside, and actually I like the outside design. And I like the engine too. So those are pretty old school dinosaurs in a lot of ways, those big old V8s. Right. On the road, this straight six is silky smooth, and at altitude with the turbocharging, it means it's really quick. Yeah, I would say this is by far the most stylish. Uh-huh. Uh, certainly the, the most off-roady in here. Uh-huh. If you like a lot of chrome and wood, this is not the vehicle for you. No, but if you're IKEA chic. Yeah, then this is the vehicle for you. <laughs> So, Dad, which of these three would you choose for your off-road excursions and your daily driving? Well, I'm a sucker for whatever is new, uh, and you know that we have bought the Defender uh, for a long-term review, so I guess that's the answer. Yeah, that is not my answer because that is our third Defender in under 500 miles, so my choice is between the Toyota and the Nissan. They're the most old school, they don't have some crazy amount of tech. It's close for me, but I think I'm gonna go Toyota. It's got the uh, aftermarket support, also has just the legendary reliability that comes with buying a tuner series. So that's the uh, easy answer for me. All right, I'm gonna ask our third reviewer. Oh my gosh, he's getting heavy, Tommy. All right, Blazy, which one would you buy? He's an Armada dog. I think he was the happiest Armada, in the back. you say? Yeah. You like the Armada? All right, go, 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 go get it, go, go. Oh, Come on, Blaze. Armada. Hey guys, just a little postscript to the video. We did make it back here to Boulder Sound and safe, but from now on the TFL Defender is gonna live on TFL Off-Road. We put it on TFL Car because, well, that's where the Defender's videos were and we wanted to make sure you guys were up to date on what was going on with it. But from now on, you'll see it over at TFL Off-Road where we'll be comparing it to this. Yep our long-term FJ Cruiser. And that video is coming up very soon, and yet we're gonna take them off-road, and we're gonna take them off-road in the snow. And if you guys love off-roaders as much as we do, just want you to know that Andre is selling his H2 Hummer over at TFL Bids right now at no reserve. So if you recall, we bought that vehicle, Andre fell in love with it, he bought it from the company, and now he's passing it on for a new owner. So check out TFL Bids, at no reserve, you can have a H2. As always, this is Roman saying thanks for watching and check out TFL Car and of course TFL Off-Road for more Defender videos for honest and independent reviews. See you guys next time, ciao.